Question 3. Data should be selected from this table 3.1 to answer the following questions. Okay, so later we're going to use uh, some of this electro potential. Part A. Standard electro potential are measured under standard conditions. Okay, part 1. Describe the standard condition used in the uh, DIN 4 and DIN 2 half set. Standard condition for this uh, ion ion couple. Uh, so, first, the concentration must be the standard concentration. In electrochemistry, standard concentration is always 1 mole per dm cube. So, which means the DIN 2 and DIN 4 ion, the concentration must be 1 mole per dm cube. And of course, temperature must be 298 Kelvin. Okay, part 2. Complete the diagram below to show how the E0 of the DIN4, DIN2 can be measured experimentally. Okay, so this is the measurement uh, of the, uh, the uh, electrode potential. So in order to get the electrode potential, we must use the standard electrode potential of hydrogen means the SHE standard hydrogen electrode okay, so it means the DIN2 and DIN4 um, sorry this one is DIN4 the half cell must connect to the standard hydrogen electrode so you can draw the standard hydrogen electrode uh, in either cell okay let's say now we just draw it on the left hand side okay so make sure gas in you just draw like this gas in one atm the <clears throat> metal plate we use the platinum the solution is the uh, hydrogen ion okay and it must be one mole per dm cube another half cell is the <clears throat> DIN4 and DIN2 ion and the concentration is 1 mole per dm cube each so the electrode we use is the platinum okay after that you try to complete the the whole circuit okay, using the watt meter and the salt bridge right so you okay if you're able to do, do all this you can get three marks uh, actually uh, the if you try to complete the whole circuit using watt meter and salt bridge it's already one mark right and all the electrode okay is all complete you can get full marks okay part three equal volume of the thin two and the core right they are mixed Use relevant E0 values to explain whether a reaction occur between these two ions. Uh, so this one you have to understand. It's a specific reaction. It's actually telling you whether there is a reaction happen or not. And in order to have reaction, these ions then must change. So we know that in order for the chloride to react, the chlorine, the chloride must oxidize to chlorine. If the chloride now is being oxidized, the tin two must reduce. This is the logic uh, in this question. You must understand what they are asking. They are asking this one actually means chloride is the one that must reduce sorry must oxidize to chlorine and therefore the tin two must reduce to the tin uh, this is what you need to know before you answer okay since we know how the reaction works and therefore we know that the <coughs> chlorine and chloride this one this uh, electrode it must be anode 
because the chloride now is oxidized. Any half cell that oxidized is anion. The thin two is the one that now reduced to, to the thin. So we know that the thin two and thin half cell, this one must be cathode because it's reduction. This half cell is undergo reduction, so it's a cathode. So therefore, we can predict whether there is a reaction or not. We can just calculate the E0 cell. So we know that E0 cell is equal to cathode minus anode. So since we know which one is cathode anode, we can substitute the values now. So cathode is this one. Negative 0 0.14 is the thin 2 and thin half cell. Minus the anode. Anode is the chlorine electrode. So it's positive 1.36. Okay, what you get is negative 1.5 volt. E not cell is negative 1.5 volt. So therefore we know that no reactions there. It will not happen anything. Okay, so whenever we get the E not cell is negative, so there is no reactions there. Right? Okay. Therefore, this one actually you should know already. I already explained. The possible equation must be this, as I told you just now. Okay, which this one, the thin two and thin must be cathode, and this one must be anode. So you put these two into the inner cell. Okay, you get negative one point five. So no reactions there. Okay, so I hope you understand this question. Okay, part four. Equal volumes of one mole per dm cube of tin two and acidified one mole per dm cube VO two positive are mixed. Write an equations for the reaction that take place in this mixture. Okay, so first we need to know the um, first species involved, tin two and VO two positive. So we need to look at uh, the E not sub uh, uh, means the electro potential. Okay, so for the electro potential, okay, is this one because uh, it started with this VO two positive and the uh, tin two, right? So when we try to use tin two, uh, the better one is uh, this one tin two. Okay, because this one is more positive, so the VO2 positive will undergo reduction, means it's more likely to gain electron. And for this thin 2, therefore it must oxidize. So that's why we don't choose this. In order for the reactions to occur, the thin 2 must be uh, oxidized to tin 4. So means this tin 2 will release electrons later, right, to form the tin 4. Okay, so two electrons released. And these electrons will gain by the VO2 positive, then it will form V3 positive. Okay, so which means if you want to calculate the E cell, yes, you can. So you use 0 0.34 minus 0 0.15, you still get positive value. So this one is, is a, a spontaneous reaction. Okay, that's why we choose these two, right? Okay, so let's get back to this part. Okay, therefore, when we choose these two, these are this half equation, this one and this one. So we O2 positive, okay, we reduce to V3 positive, tin 2 will oxidize to tin 4. This is the reactions. And we must make sure electrons same. So this equation or this half equation times 2, we make sure two electrons for each equation. So therefore we can sum up these two equations and we can get this. Right? So sum up left to left, right to right, eliminate the electrons, 
we'll get this over equation. Okay, so after that, uh, now part part B, yeah, part B. Part B is quite uh, quite challenging. Uh, so now it started with this uh, thin two correct solution, and it's undergo uh, electrolysis uh, using a uh, time and a steady current. So a mass of 2.95 gram of thin metals is produced. Okay, and the same uh, current and the time used okay, for the electrolysis of this aluminum oxide molten. Calculate the mass of aluminum metals that produce at the cathode. Give your answers to 3SF. Okay, so first, we need to know the charge that used for these two electrolysis, they are the same charge. That's the key. Okay, and after that, we try to calculate the most of the thin that's formed. Okay, the most of thin is 2.95 over its molar mass, we get this mole. 0 0.02485. Okay, this is the most of thin. And we know that in order to uh, uh, form this mole, it's required two moles of electron because it's thin too. So two moles of electrons used to form these numbers of mole of thin. And we know that the same number of charge means the Q will be used for the uh, this uh, uh, the electrolysis of the aluminum oxide molten. Okay, so in order to form the aluminum, so we know that it's required three moles of electron. That's why we use two over three, because two moles used for the thing, but the aluminum we need to use three moles of electron. That's why in order to deposit or in order to get this aluminum from the uh, aluminum oxide, so it must be the moles of the thin times 2 over 3. So we get this mole. After that, we use this mole times the molar mass of thin, we get the mass, 0 0.447. If you don't really understand the working here, uh, you, you can actually compare in this way okay because we know that the charge that used for both electrolysis they are the same so actually we can do this q1 equal to q2 same charge let's say q1 is a thin so the charge that involved is the it right it so and we can actually use the n Z F okay N is the most of the metals that uh, the, the deposited Z is the numbers of electrons that involved F is a Faraday constant so equal to Q2 Q2 let's say is for aluminium so this is also N Z F so, mole of thin, let's say is uh, this one, 0 0.02485. Okay, so it's required two moles of electron, Z is 2. And Faraday constant is just 96500, right? So it can be eliminated, right? Isn't it? So, therefore, it's equal to the mole of aluminium times the numbers of electrons involved, so it's 3, right? Okay, so therefore, the most of uh, aluminium is actually this one. The most of aluminium, so therefore, is equal to what? 2 over 3 times the most of, times the most of, 
13, right? Uh, so this is how we get this ratio. Once you get the mole of aluminum, again, times the molar mass, you get the mass. Mixture is 3SF. Okay, that's all. Thank you.